Okay, in this video I'm going to begin exercise 3C of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page 80 and the question is number 1. So it reads, a particle is projected with speed u up a hill at an angle alpha to the hill. The hill is uniformly inclined at an angle beta to the horizontal. And we're asked to show the expression for the time of flight. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is to sketch the motion itself. So I'm going to draw my y-axis and my x-axis, making my xy plane. like so and I'm going to draw in black for a reason you'll see in a moment the incline and we know the incline is at an angle beta to the horizontal why did I call two of those y? I'm not, I'm not sure now the next thing we need to do of course is to uh, is to make a new xy plane so an x prime y prime plane and for this what we do is we let the x prime axis be parallel with the incline so that's why I drew the incline in black. That's going to be my new x-axis. So I'm going to call that the x-prime axis. And the y-prime axis is perpendicular to it, so you can draw that anywhere. I'm just going to draw it here. This is the y-prime axis. So in this case, what we've done is we've picked up the xy, uh, XY axis, or xy plane, excuse me. We've rotated anti-clockwise by beta degrees. The next thing we need to do is draw the, the initial velocity vector. So the initial velocity vector is with respect to uh, with respect to the hill. So it's at an angle alpha to the hill. Like so. U is equal to U sub X plus U sub Y. Now in terms of unit vectors, you, could you can put them in if you like as well. You could say, for example, if you left the unit vectors like this, the way we usually do it, they would be no good to you because we're going to try and resolve everything in the x prime, y prime plane. So for that reason, if you're going to use unit vectors, I suggest you define them like so. So this time you could say, for example, that u is equal to u sub x i hat plus u sub y j hat. In actual fact, that's, that is definitely the best thing to do because it tells you exactly which, uh, which plane you're using. So I'm going to call this u sub x i hat plus u sub y j hat and I'm going to define the unit vectors over here in the corner i hat and j hat now the next thing we need to do is actually resolve the, the vector u and of course we want to resolve it in the x prime y prime plane so what we need are the two vectors which when added together will give me u and they are u sub x and u sub y these need of course to be parallel to the x prime y prime axes like so so this vector here is parallel to the x prime axis and this vector here is parallel to the y prime axis. So what I'm going to do is get rid of the angle beta for the moment because we don't really need that. It just clutters up the diagram. So this vector here is u sub x and and I'm not going to use red, I'm going to use black. Actually I'll use blue. So u sub x is equal to it's going to be u times the cosine of alpha. For the for the for the usual reasons I'm going to call that i hat. And this one here is going to be u times the sine of alpha j hat. So therefore u would be equal to u cosine of alpha i hat plus u sine alpha j hat. And that's nothing unusual and that's nothing you haven't done in the past. So the next thing I'm going to do is define my u vast as normal. Bear with me a second. Alright, so let's plug in the values we know. We know this one here is equal to u cosine alpha. This is equal to u sine alpha. The next thing we need to, to do, excuse me, is to resolve our gravity vector. And this is the probably no, this is definitely the most difficult part of the questions. So if you can understand this, to be honest, I would imagine you can understand everything then. Okay, that didn't really work. I probably should have just rubbed out the whole thing, but anyway. Alright, so what we have at the moment is our x-axis and our y-axis in red, giving our x-y plane. And our x-prime, y-prime axes, giving our x-prime, y-prime plane. And gravity acts in the negative y direction, like so. Now, because we're resolving everything in the x prime, y prime plane, we need to also resolve this in the x prime, y prime plane. And the way to do it is to start at the base of the vector, 
and draw we'll say your your a line parallel to the y prime axis or the j the the j hat unit vector like so until you can go parallel to the i hat or x prime axis like that they need to be in this direction in order to add and give you the, the vector g so this here is a uh, g sub y and this is g sub x now of course uh, we've discussed in the past and I'll draw it from the bottom here that if you've two if you've two we'll say angles I'm going to call this a beta and then you've another angle perhaps alpha and if they at all intersect at a right angle like this one here then alpha is equal to beta and that's vital so if we look if we analyze what we've drawn upstairs or up above excuse me we go back up here if we look if we extend the vector g sub y down to meet the x prime axis it's going to do it at a right angle and that of course means that this angle here beta is also up here like so so what I'm going to do now is resolve this vector remember opposite goes for sine and adjacent for cosine so g sub x becomes g uh, I'll actually draw it over here so it becomes g times the sine of beta and g sub y becomes g cos beta I'm going to get rid of these unit vectors because we know those at this stage now the next thing we need to do is think of, think of what way the gravity is going to affect the projectile if we look at the directions of the vectors we've drawn the g sub y vector is in the negative j hat direction or the negative y, y prime direction so it is going to decelerate the the projectile in that axis and if you look at the uh, if you look at the direction of the g sub x vector it's in the negative i hat or the ne or the negative x prime axis direction which means it's going to also decelerate that so we want of course that when we plug in gravity i'm going to always tell you that gravity is equal to minus 9.81 and what we want is that when we start plugging in numbers both of these will be negative and at the moment they are because if we plug in minus 9.8 here this is a minus number and so is this so for that reason we can write the following in here this becomes g times the cos of beta and this becomes the g, g times the sine of beta and both of those are in fact negative quantities and therefore they are decelerations which is correct so we don't need our, our graph or excuse me our uh, sketch anymore so I'm going to get rid of that and we're going to start analyzing this properly so v is equal to u plus at so in this case it becomes u cos alpha that's u plus um, a which is g sine beta t and over here becomes u sine alpha plus g cos beta t as well remember s is equal to ut plus a half at squared so it becomes u sine alpha t plus a half a which is g cos beta Excuse me, t squared. Similarly, over here we get u times the cos of alpha t plus a half a, which is in this case g sine beta t squared. And of course, we have t and we have t. So the vector asks to find the time of flight. So the time of flight is this, is this, uh, is the time at which the particles come back to rest or back to ground. So the condition here is that s sub y, the distance above the uh, x-axis or in the, the height essentially is zero so we need to let s sub y equal to zero so we say s sub y is equal to zero is equal to u sine alpha t plus g over two cos of beta t squared uh, so I'm going to take out t and we get u sine alpha plus g over two cos beta times t is equal to zero where two things are multiplied together and equal zero then one of them must actually equal zero so in this case this t equals zero or uh, what we'll, we'll do we'll get we will get the following we'll get u sine alpha is equal to minus g over two cos beta times t and therefore t will be equal to now it'll be equal to u sine alpha well actually it'll be equal to 2u sine of alpha over g over minus g cos beta 
like that. And if we look at that, that's the correct answer to you, sine of alpha over g cos beta. Of course, the book says this is a positive quantity, but that's because they define g minus g is equal to 9.8. So in fact, they're the same answer. So part two says, part two says to find the time taken to reach the highest perpendicular height above the hill um, is exactly half the time of flight. So you have to find the, the highest perpendicular height above the hill. So I'm just going to look at my notes here. So the perpendicular height above the hill is, is, is basically when the velocity in the y direction is equal to zero. All right. So because of course if you throw your bio in the air it's going to come to rest before it comes back down. So in this case v sub y is going to be equal to zero. So we have v sub y, uh, that's incorrect, we have v sub y is equal to zero, is equal to u sine of alpha plus g cosine of beta times t. So rearrange that and we're going to get minus u sine of alpha is equal to g cosine of beta times t and as a result t is equal to minus u sine of alpha over g cos beta and we noticed a moment ago that the other time we had gotten the time for the range was equal to was equal to minus 2u sine of alpha over g cosine of beta so as a result we've shown that the time for the maximum range is exactly twice the time to get to the maximum height which is exactly what we're required to do so thanks for watching please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel